Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to Madden 18 on EA Sports. Every wide receiver in the NFL wants to be a top target, and two players will be trying to be that today. It's Adam Thielen's Vikings going up against Edelman's Patriots. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, thanks. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Mass. All the success in New England over the last few decades, and this crowd has never been more enthusiastic. A moment ago, the Pats emerged from their locker room. They are set as they'll square off with the Minnesota Vikings. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. First down, here's Cousins. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. It'll be a two-yard gain, and it'll be a second down. Now Cousins. And oh, right away, he lost the football. And the Patriots have it. So a first quarter fumble in the rain, and this isn't supposed to let up. They've had flash flood warnings just west of here, so they better get used to this. And it's hard to do real early in the game because you're so amped up and you're trying to do so much. You've got to get used to it, though. You've got to focus in on the ball, make sure you're taking care of it. That one cost them. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. And now a fumble. Brady loses the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. Fourth down now. One thing I know from experience is that when the deep ball is thrown and you're the defender, you've got to fight that little bit of panic that emerges. You've got to play the ball really well. It's a 50-50 jump ball play. And guess what? They took a shot. How are you going to win it? And in this case, they managed to get it done. So they recover the fumble but could not take advantage of the short field. They do get three. And no one ever turns down three points going up on the board. But the offense will go to the sidelines wondering what if, while the defense on the other side, they'll celebrate holding them to just a field goal after giving up such bad field position. Vikings coming out here again to take over on offense. And this is a crew, obviously. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. And he is not quite going to make it all the way in. They'll mark him down right about the one-yard line. So the football switching hands here in just a second. And, you know, Tom Brady, just to go off on a tangent for a second, may have lost the Super Bowl. But third MVP this past season and what he did at age 40, really something, right, Charles? Absolutely. And he will score. Touchdown, Patriots. Tom Brady taking it in from a yard out. And the Patriots add six to their lead. So a quarterback scramble, certainly a pass play, but he saw something, tucked it, and got in the end zone. A lot of quarterbacks, when they scramble, they're scrambling to create more time to throw the ball downfield. In this situation, as you noted, he tucked it and took off. Great play by him.
CD, I want to get your thoughts on some potential free agents this offseason before we change the possession here. Now, caution, many of these guys could be resigned, I know, but who are some of them? Kirk Cousins is one. Yeah, we're talking about difference makers. Kirk Cousins at the quarterback position. He's going to be coveted around the league for by quarterback needy teams. Case Keenum had a big year. Could he move? But how about running backs? Le'Veon Bell, Deion Lewis. Some pass catchers, Jimmy Graham, Jarvis Landry, Sammy Watkins. And about the guy who goes and gets quarterbacks, DeMarcus Lawrence had a monster year for Dallas last season. Yeah, a lot of big names that could be out there as free agents. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in his first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job. They're doing more than that, aren't they? They get a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. You and I both know that you don't really truly replace Adrian Peterson, but Latavius Murray is a really good back. Similar running styles, too. Won't wear the same number, we know that. But when you see him run, you might see a little bit of that in him upright with some power. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter and a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. That's not only Adam Thielen. That's the pro bowler, Adam Thielen, who had 91 catches this year and over 1,200 yards, a career high. We always look for great stories when we do games. Is there a better one this season than Adam Thielen in terms of where he came from to make a Pro Bowl roster as a receiver for the Minnesota Vikings? Lightly recruited out of high school, ends up at Mankato State, which is now known as Minnesota State Mankato. Undrafted, goes to a rookie free agent tryout camp, hangs around, makes the practice squad, First, he's a special teams guy, and now he's one of the better receivers in the league. I think he's one of the... Now the hit comes, and Cousins lost the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. Well, that was a big oops right there. But how about his ability to correct it? Loses the football, able to get it back himself. Yeah, pounced right back on it, keeps possession. That was second down one for Murray. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. That'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And that's going to lead to a third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable. And you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say. Play action. Yeah, without a doubt, that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? Now, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. Call it a gain of three. And that's going to make it fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. It would have been a long field goal. The fake doesn't work out. The runner-up New England Patriots offense back onto the field. And I wanted to get your thoughts on the offense for this crew as they go into 2018. How do they stack up, Charles? Typically, New England, pretty darn stable. One of the goals going into the offseason was to try and hold on to running back Deion Lewis because coupled with James White, that's a heck of a tandem. Of course, the big fella, Croc. You know, you find him another All-Pro year in 2017. And remember, before 2017 began, they picked up Brandon Cooks in a trade at wide receiver. That paid off in a big way. He had his third straight 1,000-yard season in the NFL. And then, of course, there's Danny Amendola, Chris Hogan, and they expect to get back Julian Edelman for all of 2018 coming off of a knee injury. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that and have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him 
I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. The first carry now for Rex Burkhead. And the broken tackle helps lead to a first down game. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. Throwing on first down is Brady. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. Nice gain of eight that time, but it's second and goal. Instead of the running back in New England, sometimes they like to call them the passing backs. They, they get them the ball in different ways, don't they? They certainly do. Think about the ones they've had in recent vintage. You talk about Kevin Falk, Danny Woodhead. And that's caught by Gronk for a pass touchdown. Rob Gronkowski, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Patriots add on to their lead. And the defensive there, that was a battle. He just made a really nice play. A really nice play, making sure his body position was correct. And how about the throw? Zipped it in there. And it results in the touchdown. Goskowski now out to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. But before the possession switches here, I had written down that I wanted to talk about some of the awards this past season in the NFL. We know Brady was the MVP, but Todd Gurley, Offensive Player of the Year. How about that for a bounce back? Many were questioning whether he'd had a sophomore slump the season before. Didn't even get to 1,000 yards. Was a dominant force in 2017. How about his teammate Aaron Donald on yeah. the defensive side? He took home Defensive Player of the Year award. Yeah, very impressive. They had both sides of the ball. Sean McVay deserving, I think you would agree, of Coach of the Year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what he did for the Rams when they went from last in the league in scoring to leading the league in scoring and winning a division title. And how about the New Orleans Saints? Rookie of the year. Eight yards still remaining here on third down. <laughs> Working out of the gun, Cousins. And incomplete on the deep ball. And attempted a deep ball there, and they didn't get it. But, boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent-sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. And now it's the punter Wild on as he sends this one away. Taking it about the 16. A great return there of 22 yards. And the Patriots take over. For the offense changes hands here, let's look back at the Super Bowl February 5th. What a game. I know you were there calling it offensively, though. Impressive on both sides. It certainly was, and let's face it, if you're in Minnesota, it's cold outside, but you talk about the offenses, they heated up in a big way. And how about Nick Foles? The backup quarterback turned MVP. 373 yards, three touchdowns, and of course, the big one receiving on the Philly Special. Quite a story. As you and I were talking about off-air, it was just a fluid game, not a lot of penalties, just really clean play. Exactly the type of game the NFL needed for the audiences at home watching the game, and of course, people in attendance. A really well-played game. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Well, no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Vikings will take over here first and ten. I want to give a hat tip real quick, Charles, to J.J. Watt before the possession switches here. Walter Payton, NFL Man of the Year. They totaled up how much he helped raise for Hurricane. Now the hit comes, and Cousins lost the football. And it's picked up by the Patriots. And he will score. Touchdown, Patriots. 
This first half has been a nightmare for that offense. Defense just dominating them. And when you're picking up the ball, picking up their mistakes, and taking it the other way and putting it in the end zone, that's a defense's dream. They're having that type of a game. Everything that can go wrong has gone wrong for this offensive unit. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This fielded at the two. <laughs> take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Now the Vikings now heading on to the field. And let's just say they're going to be looking to start over on this drive. A few moments ago, they were in the exact situation, but their first play led to a fumble that was returned for six. Yeah, you definitely have to have the short memory to play in the NFL. you got to remember what you did wrong so you don't repeat it, but you can't dwell on it because then you will repeat it, and that's what you don't want to do. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end, curling in the middle of the field, so it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterback, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted, throwing back across his body. Picked off by Jason McCourty. Oh, he slipped right by him. And a great return as they're finally able to take him down. I'm not sure, Brandon, we've seen a sloppier played game this year for a team on offense. Turn it over four times and expect to win? No chance whatsoever. And look, I have no idea what the ratio is about turnover. And this is caught. Touchdown, Patriots. Julian Edelman there to make the grab. And the Patriots are pouring it on. But what a quick turnaround there. They get the football. Next play, boom, touchdown. I've been in a situation before where a turnover occurs. If you're over on the bench with your defensive mate and you talk about what to do on your next series, and all of a sudden you hear sudden change, you've got to get out on the field and defend right away. Not everyone is mentally prepared to go. Is that what is yelled on the sidelines a lot of times? That, among other things. <laughs> Maybe some words we can't share here. Yeah, we'll, we'll just keep this one PG. FCC violation. No doubt. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. Had one tell me once, you know, when we were having a tough patch, this two shall pass, this two shall pass, and then finally we kept having a rough patch. He said, but you've got to do something <laughs> Heads up. to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted, and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. Cousins now to throw on first down. And he goes down. It's a Patriots sack. Dante Hightower. Coming hard on the blitz, he dumps him for a loss of eight. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. He'll find Thielen work in the middle. And he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40-yard line. 23 yards on the play. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Cousins now, and this one is incomplete. But one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them, they've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. They'll run here. It's Murray. And some room to roam now. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. It goes for a gain of 10, and it's a first down. 
Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in there. Now the hit comes, and Cousins lost the football. And it's picked up by the Patriots. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. All these years we've been watching the game, I start to get the sense that whenever it rains out, those guys have to touch the ball and carry it. They're extremely resentful about that weather. Yeah, I'm just happy I'm not resentful that we have a roof over our heads. I know that much. Yeah, maybe we won't fumble our play sheets here as we just saw the fumble happen on the field. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back to Foxborough after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will have the highlights and analysis of this first half from our studios in Orlando. And I have a fairly solid idea about which team will be featured prominently in those highlights. <laughs> Might be a little biased. And that one is incomplete. He just dropped it. But they're up big on the scoreboard, so maybe he can chuckle about later. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well. And he didn't get that done on that play. And now the Vikings are going to stop it here on defense with a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And they're going to fake it from deep in their own territory. off they get the first that one 28 yards on the ground so they snap it straight to the up man what's his responsibility normally obviously just to protect but he's got to be a guy that can be pretty agile too right yeah without a doubt because you're talking about a guy even in protection he may have to slide up and down the line of scrimmage to pick up someone who comes through trying to block a punt so you know he's got that ability to move but oftentimes it's a use you know, a running back, a fullback, someone who's used to having the ball in their hands, and he's able to pick up the first down. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Brady to Gronkowski. They make it look easy, don't they? And it's a Patriot first down. Brady now on first down. And incomplete. Crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. Over the middle complete. That's Gordon. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. Brady now on first down. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. Well, not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you've been overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. And his throw is incomplete. Gronkowski the intended target, and it'll bring up third down. The way he's been slinging in the first half, you expect everything he throws to go for a touchdown, but I guess he's going to have to wait to try and pick up that third, isn't he? Yeah, I thought he had him for a second, but you're right, not to be. Brady got his man complete over the middle. It's Gordon. Yeah, another timeout called by the Vikings now. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through. And they're sitting pretty now as the lead grows even further. It's a little bit of time left here in the second quarter, but they get the field goal near the end of the first half to expand that lead. And that's got to feel good, but they can't let up. Now on the kickoff, they've got to make sure they don't give up a big return or a big yardage to set up the other team for one last chance to score themselves. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. 
Well, usually you don't think of the cornerback coming in for a no-gain play, but that's what we had there. Nice tackle. Yeah, and how about the range, too? Coming from the outside part of the play, moving his way into the inside and making that play happen. No gain for the offense. Big play for the defense. And pump the brakes, Larry. Pump the brakes. We are ready for quarter number three. On the return, here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson. Now the Patriot offense set to take over again. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys. Be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. The former seventh-round pick, Julian Edelman, just continues to have such a productive career. And has made himself into a receiver. Remember, he was a college quarterback, and not just a productive one, a very good one. At Kent State, right? Yes, a great leader, a guy who could make plays with his feet and his arm. Got to the NFL and had to convert him to being a receiver and was drafted that way. And that conversion, <laughs> oh boy, it's been good. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. <laughs> a big hit. Knocked down sideways. A gain of four on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that. And they'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. A great play there. 42 yards. And the Patriots continue to roll. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. And that drives coaches insane, doesn't it? When they see that happen, it just, it just doesn't feel right, does it? Plus, you're giving up yardage. A first down throw for Cousins. It's complete to Laquan Treadwell. The 20, 10, touchdown, Vikings. Laquan Treadwell, 60 yards. And the Vikings are able to get a score back. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts. And now it's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a weaving through traffic, and now he's free. He's at the 40, 20, 10, 5, and all the way into the end zone, and that's two points. And maybe that one caused by the weather. Of course, the rain coming down. Charles, can you maybe, when you're carrying that football, grip it too tight in the rain? I think that you can, and it's such a delicate balance, too, because when you grip it so tight, sometimes it'll slip out from your body. You squeeze it too hard, and it'll pop out on its own. I've actually had running backs talk to me about that, that when they've tried too hard, even in perfect conditions, the ball gets away from them. They've got to find that good balance, carrying it firmly, yet at the same time under control. On first down, Brady breaks through the... There he goes, Julian Edelman. And he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. Julian Edelman, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Patriots are pouring it on. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors. But that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Goskowski now out to kick it away. 
This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. And now out comes Minnesota. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? So tough because we always talk about it being a team game, and you need all 11 working well together. But every now and then, partner, you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things. And I think that's what they're looking for right now. Yeah, you talk about going to your playmakers. They probably need to do it. Find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes big plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else. They go with Murray again. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time he hand the ball to a back. Third and short yardage. Cousins. And he's able to find Diggs. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Did you see that route the way that I did? I yep. thought he was trying to get deep Yeah, that first. wasn't the first option. No, not the, it came off of that guy, the deep guy. He came underneath on the drag, completed it very well. And not much room to operate as he'll get this up only to about the 41. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. Going deep for Diggs. Oh, nearly picked. And maybe lucky there. This guy doesn't drop many defensively. Third down. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw. Unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. He's got the connection over the middle to Diggs. Touchdown, Vikings. Stephon Diggs, 59 yards. And the Vikings are able to at least knock this deficit down a bit. And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him, let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right, RAC? Run after catch, and he loves that, and he's going to carry that in at contract time. This is taken at the three. The Patriot offense now set to come back out onto the field. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-play drive last time, to see if the defense, you, you know they're ready. They don't want that to happen again. And you would have thought they would have been ready the yeah, last time. I that's mean, true. that's what you work on all the time. Make sure that no one gets behind you. That's the cardinal sin of defense, not giving up the long pass. They did. Let's see how they adjust. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. No gain on that one, and it's going to bring up a third down. New England on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This will be third and six. Back now in Foxborough. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Throwing is Brady on third down. Over the middle, that's caught by Hogan. Troy fought off the tackle, and that effort gives him the first before he's brought down. Brady fighting Hogan on third down, and the Patriots able to convert. But we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered, but how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. It'll be a gain of nine, and it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. 
Now the secondary's really struggled today, but that's a little bit of a measure of revenge, isn't it? And they just followed the basic rules. See ball, knock ball away, turns into a nice play. Brady to throw on third and one. He's just gonna dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. Fourth quarter, you've got the big lead. If you're coaching, Charles, you, you still taking shots like that downfield? I'd be a little more concerned with running some clock and making sure you're taking care of the lead because you keep flinging it around, you throw a couple of picks, you can put yourself in jeopardy. And he's brought down. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and take and go like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. No gain on the play there, second down. And if you're the defense and those D tackles, you like that they're trying to run the football here against your 4-3, don't you? Yeah, because they tend to eat things up because they are so strong and physical, and especially when they play with leverage where they get lower than the offensive linemen and control them. And what I love about the good defensive tackles, they can play over the guards, they can slide and play over the center. Nobody in the offense likes that day when they have to deal with those guys. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Now Brady leaves to Burkhead on the draw. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Personal foul. Face mask. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration. Not a good play. They go play action here on first down. This is caught, and he's brought down. Another nice gain, 16 yards there, and a first down again. Well, they don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway to throw it's Brady and give him another six it's caught for a touchdown and the blowout continues you have fun with this one partner I am I mean, he's been fun to watch under center we always talk about you know getting to the next level right when we see people get into the zone this guy's in the master class right now what a performance he's putting on just carving him up four touchdown passes carving him up is right seems like everything he throws is going to be a completion and going in the end zone up big and they go for two and they get it i remember being in high school and seeing an article in the paper where a local columnist had said why are we fighting over sportsmanship and running up the score just run it up on everybody and deal with it. Some people just don't care that way. And obviously, this coach feels the exact same way. So that article is saying the defense should be able to stop them. That's what they're trying to say. Hey, if you don't want it to happen, stop them. Otherwise, quit whining about it. Cousins on first down. Over the middle complete. It's Morgan. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. Cousins on third and two. And he can't come up with a pick. Nearly his second of the game. Instead, fourth down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. This is taken at the 15. 
We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the Pats will be backed up deep to get the drive started as they take over first and 10. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll be taken down, losing yardage back at the nine-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Yeah, let me puff out my chest a little bit, even though I'm not rooting for either team. That was a really nice defensive play. It's awfully fun to watch, even in an offensive game. Throw left side complete. That's Gordon. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. That one good for 13 at a New England first down. Now they try the right side here. And he's got some space here. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. That good for 22 at a first down. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Brady going to throw here. He's going to air it out deep for Hogan. And he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. And a big collision there as he winds up flat on his back. Four yards on the pickup, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game, but these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Are you I, one of those guys who's skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice, got your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air boot, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years.